Hey everyone, it's the Hey Poopy Podcast. What that booty do from poop to pleasure to health. Hosted by me, Dave. And me, Ellen. Two curious people removing the stigma from your stinker. And why are we doing this? Because we love laughing and learning about the butts and helping them to be the best they can be. Kind of like this butt, the bottom's digest, Alex. He came on to tell us how he keeps his butt clean and healthy and ready for bottoming. Yes, Alex is the chief bottom officer at the Bottoms Die Chest. And what you might be asking yourself, what is that? Well, it's basically an awesome place to find amazing recipes for all you bottoms who like to do those little bottomy things. <laughs> <laughs> He's got tons of recipes for bottom friendly people that won't give you that bottom friendly mess. (laughs) Exactly. And his whole thing is if you're eating tons of fiber and eating healthy, you won't be bloated for sex Mm -hmm. and you will be available because you'll be have your poop pipes will be clean and ready to go. But also his recipes don't just work well for people who bottom. It works well for people with IBS and it's low fob. So it's great for everybody. A lot of vegetarian recipes are in there. Just amazing breakfast. You guys got breakfast recipes desserts sweets sweet savory you name it he's got it on there and we were super happy to talk to him and all of his recipes are poo poo friendly oh yeah they just keep you going alex was a bank of knowledge as far as how this goes and where from where bottoms dad just started to where it is now is kind of remarkable yeah he's he's blowing up and you're going to hear a little awesome tidbits like this as a bottom it's really hard to find this information and I don't want people to finally feel like they landed on it and then things don't work out for them. You know, obviously right. we all have different bodies. So not every recipe is gonna work out for you. I try to be as IBS friendly as possible, but sometimes some recipes aren't IBS friendly because you know we have other people that we have to think about in our community that don't have it. So I'm always trying to diverse the recipe, di- add diversity to our recipes, but the test group is incredibly important to me it's a group of about varying from five to ten they're you know they're dry clean so you gotta hope they respond (laughs) like i love them but they they even know they're like three hours late to everything um, they have all that makeup to put on they have 24 hours to consume it and then they get back to me with real world scenarios like did you drink did you have sex how how did you feel how did you feel within the hour of eating it (laughs) And plenty more of that came from. And if you want to know more about our show, Hey Poopy Podcast, go to heypoopypodcast.com and learn about our email, our merch, everything. Plus, we're in some wonderful film festivals coming up, Nighthawk and Hump. There's links to them on the website. Yep. Check it out. So I hope you enjoy this episode and on to the shits show. Are you soft as a panda, yet strong as a bear? Bamboo is redefining toilet paper for the future, being more sustainable using bamboo fibers that grow 16 times faster than hardwood. Bamboo is soft to the touch, yet strong so you use less TP with each wipe. Septic safe, unbleached, and unscented for all those delicate parts. And get 10% off with our promo code HEYPOOPY at GoBamboo. Go Bumboo, spelled G-O-B-U-M-B-O-O. We give a sheet about our future. You should too with Bumboo. Just, you know, I'm trying to find a place with like-minded people to talk about like-minded things about me or about poop and stuff. Hey, poopy, how you doing? Hey, poopy, how you doing? Oh, man, what's this right here? Is this, this a podcast about poop? Welcome back. Welcome back to the Hey Poopy podcast. Hey, everybody. This is... As Dave said, the show, and it is hosted by me, Dave, and Ellen, me. Yeah, throwing her a curveball <laughs> in that me intro off because you were like, it's I know. Movie? And I was like, oh, 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 today's okay. been the last year has been really long, so my brain's not working <laughs> the way it normally is. But I mean, you get the idea. This is like the hundred and fifty um, episode yeah. one fifty five. Yeah, but it'll so, always be number two to us. Exactly. Our so favorite number. You know, one hundred and fifty some odd. There's not gonna. You know, there's only a couple of zingers in there. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, we have a very special guest today. Somebody we found through Bespoke Surgical's Instagram. And then all of a sudden, you are blowing up everywhere. It's Alex Hall from The Bottom Digest. Yes. And notable, like the chief bottom officer, which I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I love yeah, that. Changes all the time. Yeah. Meeting officer, <laughs> chief bottom, bottom chef instead of top chef. Like it Ooh. changes. Yeah, changes I love. Every day. I love titles. That's great. <laughs> you are the bottom chef, and before we go into all of the delicious things you do for all those bottoms out there, we like to go into how you poop. How have you been pooping recently, Alex? <laughs> Honestly, um, I always like to say very well. I'm still like smiling over y'all's theme song. I thought that was so fabulous. <laughs> um, pooping well, always. Seriously, I I don't always eat a bottom friendly diet. I always tell my audience that that is not the most realistic thing to do. But I do. I'm already lactose intolerant, so I don't mess with dairy ever. I eat fiber every day. I put fiber powder in all my drinks. So I would say really well. Yeah, yes. you're like A plus. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do it. Got to do it. Nice. Are you more than one a day? Are you a morning pooper? Or That's a good question. I would say I'm more of a night one. Funny enough, but it does depend on how much coffee I have. Um, <laughs> I'm like on my third coffee today, so. So there might be a movement. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm a movement. Yeah, that was really good. Um, the number two. One and this movement yeah i would say a night um not really that much of a morning i'm more of a morning sex person and i think Ooh. i think i've mm. trained my body to be like to to figure things out <laughs> time of the day like so morning sex morning is great sex is the real coffee that's, that's awesome how i look at it uh, it really is <laughs> and also like I don't want to be judged what I'm about to say, but I turned 30 this year, but I'm already getting like too tired later. <laughs> <laughs> so, no judgment uh, here. So I'm just saying like I later in the day, I'm like, especially now that I, cause I have a day job and I also run the bottom side Jess alongside my husband. He's the co-founder alongside with me. But so by the end of the day, I'm so like zonked by it all. Cause you all don't see all the food I eat off camera. Too. <laughs> There's, there are times where I drop shit and I gotta like just <laughs> eat that and like, remake it and eat that again later. And like, so by the end of the day, I'm full and tired, and not feeling it. So now I get it. Maybe that's why I also poop. <laughs> Right? Now that I think about it, like I'm just eating a million things a day. Oh yeah, you're all front loaded, so you just gotta back it out at the end of the night. So I get it. I get it. Been there. <laughs> and how about you, Dave? How have you been pooping? I've only did I go twice today? I can't even remember. I think I went twice today. Once early, early morning. The last few days I've been getting up at like six o'clock in the morning, so I've been like the second I get up I go, do my things. And then now I'm here. So I think I've, yeah, I, I've gone to the bathroom twice today and nothing to report. Pretty, pretty standard stuff in and out very quick, which is nice and pretty solid. I think they were like a Ooh. four and a half. Yeah, it was good. Whoa, I like yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm using the looser side of things. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at the bristle stool chart, like a five-ish usually where that's where I, that's where I live. That's my, my dwelling. <laughs> so yeah, it's been the last couple days have been really good. I think it's because I'm taking, making sure I've been taking these papaya extract pills, which I always forget to take and a bunch of other things. So it's been good. I should get back on the papaya. I have been pooping horribly recently. Oh, no. I blame a lot of it on my birthday just a couple days ago. Oh. I think I've been drinking, um, too much alcohol and eating things that I was like, fuck it, it's my birthday. So yeah, as of yesterday, I decided I'm gonna cut back the drinking, drink some more water, I should get some more of that fiber fiesta in my diet. So yes. get but I've been having some extremely hard Bristol twos that have been like, do not want to leave the butthole. I gotta lube that thing up a little better. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, that but sucks. I was also very farty today, and I think it's because I ate some raw cauliflower yesterday. And if you heard our brown hour episode, raw cauliflower makes me farte, farte, farte. So, yeah. So you've been I'm playing with the dragon. Yes. I mean, it's going to happen. It's supposed to be eating raw cauliflower. Yeah. I can't help it, though. It's so delicious. Yeah. I have not been gassy, which is kind of nice. 
<laughs> I mean, I don't, I'm not gassy. I'm not really gassy anymore. It's weird. I farted once today, actually. Oh. And that's like, but anyway, just a little fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> Our, oh, uh, Alex, uh, on a side note, we had an episode. We drop episodes on Wednesdays, aka we call it Dump Day. And our episode that came out today, we Jave and I did this thing called the Brown Hour, where we ate all these really gaseous foods oh and God. tried to see how much farts we would make. And we were wearing diapers, and I farted, I think, two or three times. Dave didn't fart till he left, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is the most niche place I've landed. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> You're like, where am I? <laughs> this is iconic behavior. <laughs> I'm like, but yeah, so we, we, we experimented just last week with that. But now that we have the food master of the master bottom, he's not a top chef, he's a bottom chef, to the show. Alex, tell us a little bit more about yourself besides your poo. What do you oh, do? Yes, there is more to me besides that, thankfully. Yeah, so I am the bottom chef at the bottom side, Jess. I create recipes that mostly keep gas and bloating at bay, but also help with bowel movements. I think a lot of people don't think about how bloating and gas can really fuck up getting fucked. <laughs> so, uh, to be honest, yeah. it's just like, even which we can talk about messes and all that later but there's a lot of stigma around all that when in reality there's even like a joke about not taking women to steakhouses on dates <laughs> like, it's like kind of the same thing like no one wants to have sex feeling like a balloon so so i do that but i also use a lot of my educate my work in reproductive rights education because I am a graphic designer for a reproductive rights organization. Still, Amazing. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, so I use a lot of the sex ed that I've learned through that, especially through content creation and pass it through to the bottom side just in a humorous way, adding a lot more crass and how I really am because I used to be a bartender at gay bars in Houston also. So I'm kind of like meshing all these worlds together and just going for it. So I'm from Houston. I live in Austin now, but I actually am in Austin after I left New York. I was in New York during COVID. And then when COVID happened, a pandemic is like literally my worst nightmare. <laughs> You're like, I'm me. out. <laughs> yeah. So I came back to Austin and I actually stuck with my repro job because of moving here. It's like more important than ever here. Yes. yes in Texas. Yeah. Oh, it's like awful. So so I spend half of my day talking about abortion and the other half of my day talking about anal sex. <laughs> that is, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> well, you're doing God's work, sir. Oh, thank you. I am just trying to be an empathetic gentleman at this point. <laughs> yeah. So. No, that's great, though. It is wonderful, the work you're doing. And your site is awesome. It's it's beautifully designed. I'm a graphic designer as well, so awesome. from a design fact, I thought it looked, it looked great. And the fact that like all those amazing recipes, which I can't wait to start making, but I found it fantastic, so congratulations. Thank you so much. And now you know why the website looks good, because it's yeah. graphic design. <laughs> I saw like that, little... Yeah, I saw that in one of your bios or in one of the press clippings as well, too. So oh, Thank you so much. Amazing. I appreciate that. Yeah, we started following you right after uh, Bespoke Surgical posted about you. And and then all of a sudden, I literally got like three other people hitting me up like, hey, do you know this guy? You, sh you should read this That's article. Awesome. And I was like, yeah, we're following. We booked him for the show. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, yes you're, you're already popular with some of our fans. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah, I love Bespoke. Future Method, which Bespoke and Future Method are the same. Yeah. Yes. Future Method is actually a partner of mine. We do a recipe development together. So I actually have a recipe to send them right after we're done today. So I'm really excited. Um, I love working with them. Dr. Goldstein at Bespoke was actually someone I was about to start seeing right before the pandemic and before I left New York because he's apparently like, the bottom the bottoms like the bottom master doctor yeah. yeah yeah so i had found out through many other gay men in new york that he was like the doctor to go to um so it just happened to fall like in line like this it was really lucky and also you know we did put in the work but it was just really <laughs> cool that we found each other like that yeah 
I was going to be a patient and that might have changed things <laughs> because right. of like confidentiality laws and stuff like that. So yeah. Excellent. It is. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's a that. small world. This is as far as like people like linking up with, but it, but it's, it's great that you guys have a relationship like that. I love that. Yeah. The butt poop world is a very small world. <laughs> yeah. And we've For been now. friends with Dr. Goldstein so, since almost the beginning of the podcast where he wow. did a rectal exam to me for our one year anniversary. And then Dave got his butthole bleached for our three year anniversary yeah. at Bespoke. So yeah, we're big fans of them. That's iconic. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> it was great. It was easy. It was like super, it was painless. Just, it was actually, if I were looking to do that, I recommend to anybody cause it was just like, you're in and out, no pain, and you get to have a nice, awesome butthole. Really? Looking they butthole. People, they always have people in there, like, doing Instagram stories and stuff. <laughs> like, yeah, completely. They just, like, put a, like, peach sticker that, like, <laughs> over their ass, and it's hilarious. I love it. Yeah, I didn't do that. Talking, talking about peaches, I love your slogan, peachy clean recipes. Like... <laughs> That was like something that stood out to me. And I was like, yes. Peachy clean recipes for a peachy clean time. It was like a, it was kind of a way to, one, it's catchy. But secondly, it, it avoids being banned on platforms. Because if we're too frank, which is so insanely exhausting. Yeah. To not be able to say sex on TikTok. Like saying segs instead, S-E-G-G-S and stupid shit like that. It's so annoying. Um, But that was one of the reasons we actually went with that slogan to make it like stand out and it makes sense to people that engage in anal sex, but to not get flagged. Left oh, completely. Right. Um, so it, you know, I don't, I don't think Christian conservatives will really understand it too, too <laughs> yeah. well when they see it. So it's I, a fun, like little inside, like gag. The fact that plus everybody yeah. knows what that icon, like the emoji is too. So it's, it works perfectly. We're yeah. They're like, push- thinking you're making peach pies in georgia or something (laughs) (laughs) right we're actually about to like push an ad we've had a lot of problems trying to get ads approved which god it's just so exhausting and we just recently finally got one to go through and it's just a picture of ice on a plate that says before the bonsai just and then a plate of our stroganoff that says after the bonsai (laughs) just like excellent so we're having to finally like find ways that our community gets it and it's an inside joke. It's unfortunate that we can't just be more upfront about it, but an adult. Right, an adult, right? That's Yeah. Well, sometimes I think like the limitations actually make for like kind of really creative thinking as well, you know. Yeah. Sometimes when you're limited, it's kind of like, oh, I can find cool ways to do that which make it like, you know, a better product. It puts you in a lane. Yeah. So Tell us, Alex, how did you get involved with cooking? Did you have some kind of cooking background besides your graphic design? Like, how did this all start off? Yeah, so um, I love to cook. I grew up cooking. My granny, who actually have a picture of her right here. Oh, awesome. She unfortunately passed away when I was 18, so it was 11 years ago. But I... I knew she was a really great cook and I grew up cooking since I was like legit five, but I actually just found out, I think a year or two ago now that she was an even more renowned cook than I thought she had like won state champion cook offs and like, oh, wow. offs and all the stuff that I never knew about. And I was like, damn, you were so secretive. And <laughs> I were humble, very humble. She's from Louisiana, just a oh. Southern lady, but So I think I got it from her, but because I'm obsessed, I love to cook. I rarely, rarely, rarely eat out. Even when I lived in New York, I never really ate out. I love to have dinner parties. Even when I was like 18 in college, I would have people over and cook forever. Like we would all pitch in like $3 because that's all we had. And we would make a big old spread out of it for 15 of us. Cooking was always something that helped me really get through (laughs) things and help me save money and it just got better and better and better my skills anyways because i was so in love with it that i would watch youtube videos on how to cut better and cook faster and i actually used to be in fashion school and that was like kind of my trajectory for a while but i dropped out of fashion school because of finances and i still just kept cooking and i just was like it really helped me like put my mind to ease all the time yeah and Before I just like when I was living in New York, 
I love doing the graphic design work, don't get me wrong, but politics can be extremely draining. So I started to think about what would be a long-term thing for me to do. And I was literally cooking in my kitchen while I was thinking about all of this. And I started to just really think about, I swear like the Bombs Digest like just was a light bulb moment. And I like ran to a note on my phone and I just wrote the Bombs Digest, that's it. And then I left it there for like two years. Um, Wow. And when I moved to Austin, I finally actually had a kitchen big enough to do it. I know, as y'all would know that in New York, that is a problem. And I, once I got to Austin, I was like, you know, I finally, I really wanted to finally do this. Like I love cooking so much. I can meld all these experiences of being a bartender, fashion, graphic design, cooking, all these things into one thing and help other people. Cause I love to cook so much that I would legit go on Google and be like bottom friendly recipes and nothing salad water and fiber that was yeah. like it. yeah so i really saw it as an opportunity for us to take hold and get it done because i know so many people here in austin too i'm from texas and my best friend is a drag queen here so i use him and his all of his drag queen friends as my test group to i was gonna that's one of my questions because i love that you have a test group yeah because Again, since my background's in repro, ethics is really important to me. And I don't want to, as a bottom, it's really hard to find this information. And I don't want people to finally feel like they landed on it and then things don't work out for them. You know, obviously we all have different bodies. So not every recipe is going to work out for you. I try to be as IBS friendly as possible, but sometimes some recipes aren't IBS friendly because, you know, we have other people that we have to think about in our community that don't have it. So I'm always trying to diverse the recipe, add diversity to our recipes. But the test group is incredibly important to me. It's a group of about varying from five to 10. They're, you know, they're drag queens. So you got to hope they respond. (laughs) Like I love them, but they, they even know they're like three hours late to everything. um, They have all that makeup to put on. Oh my God. The other day I messaged them. I was like, Hey, I'm dropping off five free dishes of food when will you be home or do you want it and one of them responded nine hours later Jesus. I can't wait <laughs> and i was like that's not an answer yeah <laughs> like, no not home? for food like are you home like clearly you didn't you didn't read this <laughs> right so we make the food we drop it off with them they have 24 hours to consume it and then they get back to me with real world scenarios like did you drink did you have sex how how did you feel how did you feel within the hour of eating it especially um because that's kind of what we pride ourselves on these recipes is that you can eat and then go have sex is yeah a lot of people just starve all day beforehand so uh the test group is so vital i love them i couldn't i wouldn't feel good doing this without them so I eat it first. If it works out on me really well, I low key have IBS. So it has to work on me really well. Yeah. And then I make it 10 times again and ma- and take it over to them. So, um, and you have IBS C or D constipation. I actually or haven't D- been diagnosed. I just oh. know I am because of once I started this, I'm actually about to start going to see a doctor for it. Once I started the bombs digest, people were commenting about how our recipes for the most part, were IBS friendly. And that like opened my eyes up to a whole different mm-hmm. community that I wasn't even thinking about from the beginning. And I was like, oh, I should really use the FODMAP guidelines to try to yeah. develop new recipes as best as I can. Again, like I can't always do that. And I noticed that most of the recipes that were super high FODMAP, FODMAP really pissed my body off too. Oh. So hmm. I know it's not good to self diagnose yourself with stuff. I, but I really, in the since I started the bomb digest in June last year, have really started to think that I have IBS because cruciferous vegetables, oh my God, cannot cannot mess with them. And like canned beans, like there's so many things that like I really noticed that oh my God, like onions, like oh onions. that's really oh onions, oh, I love onions, that sucks. I know. Oh my God, a roasted onion. There's nothing that'll ruin my day worse. So, <laughs> I swear, like so. And what happens when, is it like 
stabbing pains? Do you get diarrhea? Do you get so constipation? Bloated. What Just bloated? So bloated all day. And, wow. and again, that's like to me, that's one of the worst things that could happen to you with one of our recipes. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, diarrhea would be really, really awful, but at least it would like pass through and you could like clean up as normal and all that. Bloating though, if that stays around all day, oh my God, you're kind of out of luck. So you could obviously take gas pills and stuff, but I like to try to keep things natural. I completely yeah, agree. I'm with you on I that. tried those gas pills too. And all it does is like, sometimes it made me more bloated because it like, instead of letting the farts out, it keeps them in and then yeah. they just like, ex like expand. So yeah. And who knows if they're even real? Like they're probably yeah. fake like sugar pills or something. Yeah. <laughs> I use charcoal a lot, activated charcoal. If I have like thick stomach, oh. tummy, uh, stomach ache, ah, Jesus Christ, tummy aches. <laughs> Can I like my wife now? She always says tummy aches. Yeah, when my stomach's acting up, I just usually use like activated charcoal, and that usually kind of keeps it at bay. I mean, there's there's exceptions to the rules, but right. for that kind of thing, it does. I, I find for me, works pretty well, and you don't feel so bloated. It, take, it just takes it down a little bit, a notch. Yeah, I I not. I had a doctor friend tell me that I had IBS and I have IBS C where I lean more on the constipated side. Mm. So that's why I was curious if you're D or C because I mean, and IBS can change differently from everybody. You could be D one day and C the next day, you know, so, yeah. but it's like a spectrum of, of tummy problems. So that's why I was curious. Yeah. Our next goal is to um, actually for the bombs digest, not my personal goal is to hire on, a nutritionist that specializes in IBS so that they oh, can great. like rev so like we would still develop the recipe take it to our test group if it passes nine out of ten for the 90 percent approval rating I would then hopefully move it on to them so that a dietitian nutritionist whatever could just look it over one more time and be like oh that looks good but I would substitute this for that or this for that yeah so that's that smart I, I'm hoping that that's what we can do because I will say some of the IBS queens are trying to take over my channel. <laughs> really? Like, they're, the last recipe, I love them. I love them. If you're listening, I love you. <laughs> but just remember, babes, that not every recipe is IBS friendly. We have other people that we have to yeah. keep an eye out for. And so my last recipe was like, this recipe is not IBS friendly at all. And I was like, it's not hashtag that it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, Read the fine print. <laughs> right. so don't put the onion in if you know that that's what's going to cause you problems. So that's kind of where we're at right now is trying to figure out how to message that better. Also to be like, you know, like a lot of our recipes, I'm a vegetarian. A lot of our recipes are for almost vegan minus the butter that we put in stuff. But we, event, we started doing meat recipes actually with future methods specifically oh, wow. to branch out because there are plenty of bottoms out there that eat meat yeah. and I didn't want to ignore them. So that's where we're, I was trying to message how to, how to message like, okay, anyone can be a bottom, but anyone can also have IBS or be a carnivore or a vegan. Like, so trying to make a lot of parties happy right now. And I'm um, with, yeah, but... sorry. Were you gonna say but Ellen? like your ultimate goal is you're the bottoms digest, you know? So yes, you can make a lot of people happy, but let, let you're famous for keeping bottoms happy. So <laughs> right. yeah, first and like foremost, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was going to ask since if you're going to, since you're a vegetarian and if you're going to start doing, we well, doing meat based recipes. Do you have like another chef that's going to come in and help make that? Or are you just going to like take one for the team? Yeah, and I taste them. I okay. Still eat them. Like, my husband eats i'm not i'm a vegetarian for the environment <laughs> right 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 so i buy in like really uh, ethical uh, source meat products still yeah. and when i do buy them my husband is not a vegetarian i'm probably gonna get so much hate for this but that's okay no fine i'm a flexitarian fine but, <laughs> as they say um but typically even when i make the meat recipes i will eat like maybe like if it's a bowl of something, I'll eat like half the bowl. Right, right, right. From it. But then my husband will eat the rest of it. Well, I was going like to say, yeah, then he's, you know, obviously he knows your taste and everything too. So I'm sure he's a good yeah. judge. And also if it affects him too, like, you know, it's a really, it's fun to like, you know, you, you don't want to be bloated and be the top either. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, hey, how did you feel from it? So 
you know, I don't make the meat recipes too often, but I have been like getting them in there a little bit more for our friends that eat that. Oh, nice. Never no beef. There will never be beef on our channel. So okay. Yeah. What kind of meats are you experimenting with? The leanest of meats, because that's the most bottom friendly. So chicken, like obviously chicken breast. When I say the leanest, um, like turkey. Even when we use bacon of any kind, it's like turkey. Turkey bacon. bacon. Gotcha. Yeah. So that it's like super lean, and then. That so far, that's about it. I haven't really gotten comfortable branching into pork because the fattier it gets, the trickier it gets. Yeah. Clean. So, so we're trying to keep it super lean, and then I have to like compensate for the fiber because meat has zero fiber. So that's where things can get tricky because if I have to, if I have to double up the fiber because there's meat in it that can cause you to get constipated completely. Yeah. 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 You have to, there's a fine line to walk between those two things. So yeah, um, we, we've had nutritionalists, we've had all kinds of people on and there is like too much fiber will stop you up. So that was actually one of my questions because it seems like you're trying to stay away from the kind of fiber that gives you gas and bloat because there are fibers out there that make you farty. But then what, how do you figure out that fine line of too much fiber, too little fiber, gassy fibers? Like what are your favorite fibers to work with? So far, ground flaxseed has been my favorite. Golden ground flaxseed specifically because it doesn't change the color too much of stuff because the brown ground flaxseed can make your dishes pretty ugly super fast Mm. but i have been finding that i love ground flaxseed i use it a lot in the recipes i develop for future method actually because of it just has a nice color but also it has a really good taste and if there's anything in the recipe that has like corn or wheat or anything it goes with it really well so i love ground flaxseed I also love chia seed when I can use it. I I did an overnight oats recipe recently and it had a ton of chia seed in it. So that with the natural fiber that's in oats, it was like a great combination. But I will even put chia seeds in like chocolate cake. Or oh, nice. I put it in grits that have pepper in them. Whoa, so, really? I love grits with yeah, chia seeds. I put yeah, chia I, seeds in the yogurt sometimes, but with grits, that sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah, I put a lot of ground black pepper in my grits, so the chia seeds just look like they're pepper and they don't have a taste. I mean, obviously they get stuck in your teeth and then you're like, what's this like gummy thing in my teeth? Um, but that's like five minutes later and like that's yeah. Um, <laughs> hey, as long as it tastes good, right? It tastes good. There, you know, chia seeds don't really add flavor to stuff. They just add a ton of fiber though. So the natural fibers have been my favorite, like chia seeds and flaxseed, like I said. I also love pure fibers powder, pure, pure, pure fiber powder. I'm also a partner with pure, but this is not a promotion. I used their fiber powder before I even partnered with them. It's We've really, had them on the show too. We love them. Uh, awesome. They're awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're also here in the city. They're a great company. I love my partners. They're all, they do ethical, good stuff, but I love pure fiber powder. It mixes into things incredibly well. It doesn't really change the color that much, which I was worried about when I first brought it on, but it's really great. So this has been my favorite so far. I have not messed with Metamucil or anything like that so far. I mean, talking- Metamucil sometimes has sugar in it, but if you just yeah. got the psyllium husk, the only problem with psyllium husks, like a lot, when water hits it, it gets so cementy so quickly. Yeah, I haven't messed with psyllium husk either because I've heard kind of nightmare stories about it. And also, I feel like psyllium husk, this is not scientific evidence from my mouth by any means. I just feel like it has the most stigma around it. And I feel like it potentially could be the one that people over consume and get yes. from. So yes. um, trying to use different methods instead. I had a friend of mine who's a nutritionalist who does mostly like vegan stuff post a bread that she made that was like a non and she used psyllium husk and I was like, Ooh, that bread must be heavy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a lead ball. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I too don't really I've never really messed with psyllium husk all that much. I feel like I've had it before but never cooked with it or anything like that. So But I've also too heard like crazy horror stories. Not horror stories, but you know what I mean. I would just chug it in the morning just to help me go. But even that can get a little bit much. 
never used it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back to your test groups, there was another question that I asked because what about do you have test groups that actually cook your recipes like have you had anybody yeah. give you responses like oh this was like a little harder for me that's a great question actually thank you um so that's actually something i really went into the again with the graphic design i'm a i'm a appreciative of the experience i've gotten from that work because i always try to think of user experience when i make stuff if like and I know that half of my recipes are more complicated because they are for someone like me that wants to cook at home and like make something special. But the other half of my recipes, I really try to lean into easy, quick, yeah. one pot, stuff like that as much as possible because I know that that's realistic and that's what people really want. And funny enough, those are the recipes I get the most feedback on, in a, which again, that means people are looking at it and immediately knowing that that's the easiest one on the page to make. <laughs> So I've had my stroganoff probably made the most, and I'm very proud to report that that one has been 10 out of 10 easy for a lot of people. I've also had my macaroni made quite often. And then the, the sun-dried tomato pasta recently, which fun fact, that's actually another content creator. That's his dish. And I tagged him in it and I asked him if I could do it first, but he is another gay chef on TikTok and he follows us back and I love his content. And Jake Cohen, who's another queer cook, who's big time, he loves the bonsai Jess and we love him. We've reached out to these other content creators and chefs and cooks when we can and we ask them, hey, can we make your recipe bottom friendly? Like, cause you know, I don't wanna piss anyone off and yeah. like ripping their dish and then being like, your dish wasn't bottom friendly, so I fixed it. Um, and so far, everyone's loved it. And so the sun-dried tomato pasta was actually Hayden Haas's pasta. And um, he was, like, so excited for us to make it bottom friendly. And so that was super fun. And a lot of people have made that one and have said it's really easy, too. But one of my – she's the best. She's a bisexual woman in our test group. We do not just test on – men we actually have quite a few trans people and a couple non-binary people and then a few men and then we have a couple women too and it just she's the my probably my favorite in the test group because she's the one that actually makes it i'll drop it off and then she'll still make it and then send me tweaks and be like ah. oh i wish this had more sauce or i wish this like she always is getting so much feedback and I'll screenshot it and I send it to all the drag queens. And I'm like, y'all got to step it up. You lazy I'm like, I'm like, that is the best. I'm like, y'all are so lazy. Y'all just are like, it's good. I didn't blow. And then she's like, it was good. I didn't blow, but I wish there would have been more sauce with the, with the tofu or cause I made that like Chinese chick, uh, orange chicken tofu dish once. She had like a million critiques for that one that were <laughs> really nice. And I was like, thank you. Nice. So she's deep diving on you. I like it. She deep dives on every single thing I drop off. So That's I really awesome. That. Yeah, that was my question to see if your test group is like, if, I mean, obviously you stick to the same group of people, but I was wondering if, if you switch it up and go outside of that, that circle and then try other people. But that's awesome. That you get all those great notes. That's fantastic. Yeah. We actually don't step out of the test group for now because, um, they have to sign things you know, uh, like, and they have to like, I have to like run their allergies and, you know, one of them is allergic to banana and avocado. So like, it can't touch like anything in the kitchen when I'm, I like eat, I'm like notorious for eating like five to 10 bananas a day. <laughs> so like when I'm cooking stuff, I like have to wash my hands a million times for her recipes. And so that's the only reason we haven't branched out is because the, that is where things can get even trickier. Yeah. And I, a one-man show right now i have like a sous chef i could like do more than 10 people but for now oof. nice killing people i mean the <laughs> fact the fact that this is on your site now there's so many awesome recipes and i do like the fact that some of them are quick because i do you know you run you know it's like work life social life you just want to make something that's not super involved for dinner right is there i mean with all the things you have going on i know it's probably pretty busy do you see like a cookbook coming out anytime soon that would be like fantastic Oh my God, that's been like our biggest question and I love it. It makes me really excited to do one because I'm not kidding you. You're probably the like almost the hundredth person. Yeah, see, there's a, there's a need. 
as a yeah, want. So, so my husband and I are going to start figuring out how we could potentially do that because I've never published a book like that or a book in at all. But because of my graphic design experience, I think I could actually whip it up. I was going to say, yeah, that that I mean, it would be a lot of work, but I'm sure you can. And yeah, plus. It's a, with your whole aesthetic and style, I think it would look fantastic. And it's all those recipes that are, again, like tasty and they're bottom friendly. <laughs> Thank you. The main... I, I definitely imagine it being like, um, I can't remember his last name, but the guy from Tim and Eric. Eric. Oh, Eric Wareheim? His, yeah, he came out with his own cookbook. Oh, my God. I really love it to be that style. It's like so bizarre mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like holding his nona which like no one believes is actually his real grandpa yeah <laughs> um, but she's like five like four and a half feet tall and he's like notoriously like six eight and she's always just holding a dutch oven in every single photo and he's like holding her like off to the side and the graphics though are just amazing in it and the food is actually delicious looking i, I think check that, that out yeah it's yeah. really i don't have the book but I've, i looked through i peeped through it at a, at a um bookstore and he's got a youtube channel too where he was like making some of the recipes and then people would come in and just like fuck it up i mean it's really i mean it's it's, it's definitely that tim and eric style so it's but yeah, yeah he i mean he's he's he loves food and so it's i think something you know, you're writing that that realm i feel like yeah i would love to do a cookbook so if not this year hopefully next year um we could at least maybe start designing it even this year but yeah it's definitely something we would love to do i mean i love your youtube channel i think i said this before ah, we started you. recording but the reason that i like it and feel like it encompass encompass a lot of what hey poop is all about poop pleasure and health yeah. and you yeah. do all three like you and you do it in a way that's funny and and delicious but then also like i made a note because while we've been doing this podcast for three years i realized that there is this stigma around bottoms and it's like fuck that shit like we should be applaud applauding our bottoms you know yeah. and i feel like you not only applaud the bottoms but you help them to have a better lifestyle so you're doing god's work sir uh, thank you so much and i love that you love the youtube like I can't wait to bring it back. It's on a little pause at the moment because we're, I was doing all the video editing, but since we're growing at a crazy exponential rate that I am like, I'm trying to find yeah. a new video editor to take on some stuff with us. And so it's been on pause, but it's really like a spoof of Barefoot Contessa on a garden. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's like, I think she's just so ridiculous and like so out of check. She doesn't even realize mm -hmm. it. I feel like she's like dumping a hundred dollars worth of saffron into a pot and like <laughs> she's just so unrealistic so, <laughs> so we've just been trying to like make fun of that but yeah i mean you're right there's so much stigma around it and how like you know there is no sex without the other person so but i just time and time again and i've been there where there'll be like the tiniest mess and like the top will just be a total asshole about it or you know like a good top would just have a towel nearby, wipe it up and keep going. <laughs> like right. never even like call it out or anything. So we're, we're trying to just destigmatize things and talk about it more and, and make other people, you know, including women and trans people and everyone that engages in anal sex to just remember that it's super normal. And my godmother has this line that I use all the time. It's coming out in TikTok video very soon, but it's, don't get in the pool if you don't want to get wet. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Don't go swimming if you don't want to get wet. And she says it like about everything. And <laughs> it makes me think of this, like don't have sex with a butt <laughs> if you don't want to deal with any kind of mess because you can eat really clean all day. And funny enough, douching can make things worse sometimes. So um, yeah, I have fister friends who will eat only gatorade and gummy bears for like two days straight and i'm just like that's not healthy you can't it's not healthy and also yeah. like you're fisting no matter what you do yeah exactly you're gonna find something like, oh for sure yeah. it's like a mine it's like a minor you're gonna get you're gonna get something like yeah. there's nothing you can really do about that yeah and my fister friend then will tell me like 24 hours after a session they're like i still haven't pooped and i was like because there's nothing in the chamber like nothing. <laughs> it takes 24 to 48 hours for poop to go from food to poop so yeah. if you haven't eaten in two days yeah <laughs> And funny enough, those Gatorades and gummy bears and stuff can actually make things worse. They, yes. There's so much sugar and yeah. they can make you really gassy and bloated. Um, 
So and then we've also had Rieger on, and and he Brandon from Rieger, which is a fisting like dating site, oh, said oh, it God. the best, like how we should never bottom shame anybody, you mm-hmm. know, never. like. Yeah, and so I'm so sick, and especially on this show, we are all about like our 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 favorite people are our bottoms, and we love our bottoms for other reasons too. But, uh, but like, yeah, stop shaming, stop like in, and we even had Michael Vegas on, who's a straight porn star who loves being fisted and pegged, and wow. he's like, yeah, it has nothing. Your butt has nothing to do with your sexuality. It's pleasure. Like, just enjoy it. For real. So yeah, honestly, so. I'm so glad you said that. And I'm so glad you mentioned a straight porn star that likes that stuff because I, I've i had a lot of women message me about how their husbands and their boyfriends and all that actually love it, but they probably aren't at the point where they're ready to follow me. <laughs> so they're <laughs> following me to get the information mm-hmm. so that they can like pass it on. Um, and, and they're ma- the wives are making the rear recipes so they can peg their husbands. I love yes. that. <laughs> oh my God. Even... <sighs> Even moms are making my shit now because it's very free for their lactose intolerant. I was like, y'all need to stop. Like, <laughs> I just started a Facebook account again because I've been off Facebook ever since I got into politics. I like don't, I don't have it. But to run ads, I had to get a Facebook again. And yep. I, when I got it, like just a couple weeks ago, the first person to comment on the page was like a mom and was like, <laughs> my kids don't even notice the substitutions. And I was like, Delete. Yeah. <laughs> you're, like, you're, not you're like, nope. After. Nope. Nope. <laughs> like, we cannot have that comment here. Like that. That uh, is the best. <laughs> so we're well, that's what a- when we first met Bespoke Surgical, and he did a butthole check to me two years ago. I like met other gay guys, and they were like, "You're the woman that Dr. Evan wrote about." And I was like, and and Dr. Evan Goldstein was like, "Yeah, I think we have to branch out more to like." everybody with an asshole so yeah, yeah. absolutely there's yes. a lot of them there's like yes. seven billion i think yeah <laughs> so it's a big number <laughs> oh um one other thing that i wanted to know from you is travel snacks like uh, i want bottom friendly travel snacks you are not the only one fun fact Ooh. so we are trying to develop more like bars and stuff like that that you can make ahead of time to take with you so that's down the pipeline for sure we've also talked about doing like survival guides um, for like when that's you're smart. Air- like oh you're stuck in an airport like what would be okay at like a starbucks or something so we're hopefully going to be moving in that direction next to doing like little survival guides and do like blog posts on our website in terms of that so yeah the travel one has been a big one especially like when we really hit on it during Thanksgiving because, you know, we really took advantage of Thanksgiving because a lot of queer people don't go home for holidays. But the ones that do, the ones that I know do, definitely dip out and go fuck with strangers. And, I was like, <laughs> and no, no shame at all. I was there too. But they all want to know like oh my god i'm stuck at my mom's house in wisconsin and all there is is milk like what do i do and i'm like well you gotta go to whole foods babe or, like, <laughs> yeah you gotta go to the grocery store babe like go get some things but you know we definitely want to even like start trying bars at whole foods and being like which ones are approved and so i think that would be a really interesting take to see like what are store products that are already done like chips and stuff like that that could potentially be bottom friendly. So nice. I love that. Well, that's I smart. also I loved when you posted, I don't know if it was during Thanksgiving or Christmas or maybe you posted on both and you were like, You're home for the holidays and you don't know what to eat, eat it anyway. There's other ways to have fun than just bottoming. <laughs> yeah, seriously. We we try to hit on that hard. Like because like I said, even if you do all the things right and you eat everything right and you cleaned up your body has a interesting way of just getting payback. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And especially if you're like stressed or something all day, like you just don't know how things are going to go. So pivot, like give a blow job, do hand jobs, practice your oral practice, like foreplay, like doesn't always have to be penetrative. And I know a lot of queer people that don't even like penetrative sex. So bridge to K. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, very famous yeah (laughs) Um, so there are 
plenty of other ways to like it doesn't have to have the whole mood collapse but i talk about this pretty often especially because i talk about this in repro reproductive rights is we don't get sex ed growing up even the sex that we get is a total crack of shit. Um, so we all learn from porn half the time. And in porn, it typically falls follows a formula of like talking to the camera, kissing, foreplay, penetration, coming, ending, like over and over and over again. So we think that that's how it's supposed to go when it could like follow that and there's a mess and you got to pivot and you go back to blowjob like there's all kinds of different routes and we don't we don't learn that stuff so we have to teach each other um, to completely Agreed. And i'm so happy that you're doing that especially making those kind of posts that were funny cute and honest that's the only way you can get through to the gays babe like the only way <laughs> you gotta, if you're not making it a joke or funny or <laughs> like i mean even rihanna's baby her pregnancy like no one can be happy for her. They're all they're all, all the gays that I follow are like when you miss your period and the album release. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so evil. Like just give her a minute. Um, I don't know so, if you heard I, about the new emoji that's supposed to be a pregnant man because like men yes, can get pregnant these yes. days and that's a fine emoji. But I've seen a lot of straight men going, "Well, I'm going to use that when I ate too much," and I'm like, "That's bloat, <laughs> honey. Don't right. stay away from that." But same. straight men do not care. God, they haven't okay. cared for like thousands of years actually. exactly <laughs> no offense dave being a no straight offense. man <laughs> it's okay dave is a little bit more conscientious especially thanks to the show so i i would assume so on yeah i mean you know <laughs> doing this long enough right. Plus, but uh, yeah that, i mean i think that everything you're doing is great it's fantastic so and I'm, it's making me hungry because i'm like looking i mean I'm like looking at these questions. I'm also looking at the site as we're talking. I'm like, I want oh, this yes. now. I want this now. I want this now. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm going to do your sun-dried pasta, sun-dried tomato pasta, but I am also gluten-free because it constipates the hell out of me. Yeah. So I'm going to do it gluten-free. Is there is there any other tips that you can give our listeners or even just me and Dave about bottom-friendly, gut-friendly things that we could do to adjust a recipe yeah so i have a few pillars <laughs> and it's funny you bring up pasta wheat is like such a tricky one your body either loves it or hates it and then it seems to be like the opposite with gluten-free stuff the other half of the time so unfortunately she's not one of our pillars yet we're still working on that one but the pillars that i do hit on really often are limiting dairy excluding butter butter seems to be like the only thing that doesn't cause the same reaction that like a glass of whole milk would and if you're not going to limit dairy at least limit it limit the two percent and the fat free and all that like at least go whole because the more processed it is the worse it is on your body for gas and bloating especially so dairy is a no-go we never have dairy I use butter because I grew up in the South and it just... Mm. Butter is the best. <laughs> yeah. Butter is the best. <laughs> it just doesn't cause the reaction. But for my vegan friends, I'm always like, just easily sub out the butter. Like, that's it. So we don't ever have dairy. The other one is those cruciferous veggies. They're so tricky. Um, so I stay away from Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli, like all those cruciferous cabbage, like the day you're bottoming or the day you don't want to be bloating bloated or gassy stay away from cruciferous veggies obviously drink tons of water tons and tons and tons of water i had three coffees today but i probably had two gallons of water <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so like just get so much water in and then limiting red meat as much as possible for sure it's there's a lot of stigma around about red meat sitting in your body too long and stuff like that a lot of that's been like back and forth to be honest in a lot of my research and i make sure to research off of verified <laughs> things that are approved yeah. by doctors and stuff but there, there still seems to be a lot of ping-ponging about that but i do know that meat does not make cleanup all that much easier so um especially red meat and red meat can cause some really raunchy gas so not crazy about that one 
I think those are like my biggest ones, my, especially the dairy. I feel like we hit on dairy more than anything. But next we're really moving into wheat because we don't ever use whole wheat. Whole wheat seems to really, I've tested it with so many things, my biscuits, breads that I make, and 10 out of 10, every time we've done it with whole wheat, everyone is bloated. Yep. Everyone feels like they have a brick in their stomach. So you'll find on our channel that we always use white pasta, white bread, like everything is like just normal. It sucks because whole wheat is better for you, but you know, have those on the other days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so gluten-free, we're testing out still a lot. Like I said, I react really poorly to gluten-free stuff. A lot of my test group doesn't. It's like so mixed. So. Yeah. But it also no, I can sometimes even react, even though I'm gluten free. The processed gluten free stuff is bad. It's just yeah. not good. There's so much gluten free stuff too. Like you never know. They all have different formulas. They all have different things that make them gluten free. Some some things have chickpeas. Like something, which I would I would definitely avoid any kind of legume on bottoming days too. Like chickpeas, beans. I have found that dry beans work the best. I actually found through research that when you soak dried beans, a certain type of sugar comes out of them that causes really bad gas and bloating. But when you buy them canned, they've been sitting in it and they right. soak it all back up. So if you can buy dried beans, it's already better. So those are some of my biggest tips, I think. I nice. think they're all really they're awesome. Great, great tips. It's literally everything we ate during their brown hour our brown hour <laughs> yeah. it was your hell <laughs> yeah when you said brown hour i was like i don't yeah you would have there's no way i mean that being said it's weird that being said like i i was i was gassy for sure i mean i was like i was bloated after eating all that stuff but when i got home i didn't wasn't like ripping farts or anything like nothing crazy it's like i think i went went to the bathroom once no and that was that felt great I think I even ate something after. I was like, oh, I'm not even hungry. Then after I took that shit, I was like, oh, I'm kind of hungry after this. <laughs> oh my God, I was a mess. <laughs> I was farting for 24 hours. And I'll send you the video, Alex. Yes. I w we wore diapers. <laughs> I was so swollen. I looked like I was eight months pregnant. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's my channel's worst nightmare. For yeah. Me. Yeah. You don't want that. I think the walk back to the train was, did me some good too. Like just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like just walking back, like it was like, you know, nice and walking back home. It was, it was fine. But yeah, I mean, obviously people's all, everybody's different. So, you know, but I do there's love broccoli. This, there's also this book called Fartology, Alex, that I'll email you. And yes. it's also probably like you could read it and be like, let's do exactly the opposite of Perfect. everything in this book. Yeah, seriously, I've been relying on stuff like that so much and the research is never going to end until i have like a full-time scientist on yeah yeah <laughs> uh, like it's gonna i'm always learning and trying to figure out new stuff i can't on uh, after like you asking what tips i have i've like in, honestly gagged at how many i have now because if you would have asked me in april of 2021 <laughs> it would have been a few yeah yeah but I just like there's so much good information out there, especially for IBS people. So I really use that as a roadmap. Nice. I completely agree. Cool. Yeah. And everybody's gut is different. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's we like the gut, everyone like I can't express that enough that everyone's body's different. So we're trying to like remind our audience that because they'll just comment on stuff and be like, I can't have cashews. And I'm like, put what you can have in it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Like, no one's got a gun on. in your head. You can actually, you know, adjust right. these things accordingly. Yeah. yeah, you're not at my restaurant. Yeah, you're, at, you're, <laughs> you're on TikTok. Like, <laughs> um, so, the, like everyone's bodies are different. It's um, like we just said a second ago. You eat gluten free. I have a problem with gluten free. Like, so wheat is just the trickiest one so far. But yeah, cool. Alex, well, you've been amazing. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. That's so kind. <laughs> Let's just go into this little segment we like to call Shitty Choices. Shitty Choices. So, first choice, sit on a pile of shit and eat a dick. Ooh. Or sit on a dick and eat a pile of shit. <laughs> I would definitely say the first one. Yeah. I would rather eat the dick any day. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that would be... 
I just like the sh- eating shit <laughs> just should never yeah. enter. But I mean, you never know. Some people maybe they don't want to sit in the dick. I'm gonna go with the first one as well, just because the thought of eating a pile of shit. No, thank you. Yeah, I love that Dave is gonna be eating some dick. Yeah, yes, dude. I think any person in their heart of hearts would do that as opposed to <laughs> eating a pile of shit. <laughs> I don't care how fucking fucked up you are as a person. I'm pretty sure most people would do that. Yeah. <laughs> now are we like quite literally eating dick too like oh i mean you know doing it and i mean whatever however how, how, how we get down i guess but i mean this I, you know <laughs> it just it just it sounded it just flowed better sitting and eating versus you know but yeah sucking lick it whatever you whatever you want to call it, <laughs> nice. <I got> it. <laughs> end, end of the picture gotcha <laughs> so i guess we're i guess we're all three for three on um yeah Sitting on a pile of shit. Oh my god! Just the thought of that, like that picture. <laughs> Are you naked sitting on this pile of shit? Oh Can you god. be wearing that does, something? That does make a difference. I mean, yeah. I didn't really, you know, um, I guess signify which, you know. But yeah, if you want to be naked, you want to be clothed, fine. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, some people. I guess you, you can get blowjobs after you're full, cl- fully clothed. So, <laughs> sure, whatever, yes. whatever works. I mean, if you want to be a total freak about it, I mean, I guess someone would. You could argue. If you're naked, at least you can just you're not you're not ruining your clothes with the shit. It's just kind of like just hop in the shower afterwards, clean off. So there is that, I, but you know. I would rather put a little little barrier down. <laughs> no, I get it. To sit on the poop. I mean, this is all like this is this isn't re- this is all not reality, <laughs> but <laughs> so you know. But you make it up. Let's choose your own adventure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three for three. Okay, so we're gonna go into this little quick news story, and then we'll get you out of here. Okay, so again. I mean, I, this is not a plug for the New York Post because the New York Post is the biggest piece of shit paper, but they have a whole, they literally have a section called poop, which I got to say, I got to say, I mean, I got to give credit credit to do. That's kind of amazing. But I mean, it's, if it's a shitty newspaper. It makes I mean, sense it's, to it's have a shitty it, section. completely. And I've, I've said it before and I said it again. It's a shitty paper, but they have a whole section of poop, which is kind of funny. Anyway, this came from, I think, The Sun, which I believe is another shitty paper in the UK. Alex, this might, you know, be of um, interest to you because this deals with TikTokers. So (laughs) the title is called How Crappy TikTokers Are Eating Frozen Honey and Getting Diarrhea. I don't know. Yeah. So this was like a trend going on in TikTok for a while where people were taking it was called the hashtag Frozen Honey Challenge, which had some 90 million views. And basically, it was a viral trend where people were freezing honey and then just eating it, yep. eating it raw. But which apparently some doctors were saying, nutritionists were saying, like, honey is like usually meant to be ingested like with small amounts of sweetening, yeah. not like in giant portions. So people were like, I guess this one particular TikToker that was on here, user the Nostalgia Queen, tried the viral challenge, posted their video with the experiment, and she ate a bunch of it. And then after a few minutes. She just declared, I don't feel so good. <laughs> yeah. I've actually commented on quite a few of those. Oh, awesome. This is this is great. Yeah, I was like, um, not expecting this one to pop up. Um, <laughs> but I would comment on them and be like, that's going to give you diarrhea. Because honey is super high FODMAP, like super, super high, especially eating that much of it. Yeah. I think, I think like... When you look at FODMAP diets, they like give you a certain amount of dosage for like mm-hmm. like literally a certain amount of berries or a certain amount of a fruit. And, and I think honey was like, don't quote me on this, but even though it's on a podcast, but like half a tablespoon or something. So like eating a whole thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, Wait, how much were they eating? I'm like the videos were like, it's like they, they would put it like into like a water bottle. And then yeah. freeze it and then sort of squeeze it out and then like eat like a giant chunk of it. And this woman, Kirsten, um, Kristen Kirkpatrick, who is a Cleveland Clinic registered dietitian, was saying that like, you know, honey itself is triggering, it triggers these side effects because you're not supposed to have it in mass quantities like that. So yeah, you're going to get diarrhea, stomach cramping, bloating, and other unpleasant effect. My goodness. One of my friends is also a really phenomenal dental surgeon in New York, actually. 
Mm-hmm. And she even was like pulling them in on her pages and being like, this will pull an implant out. <gasps> this will pull a crown off. Like, don't do that. I can see that. Uh, yeah, so she was it's like, a lose-lose situation. Yeah, because it's like half frozen. So like the suction. Yeah. Stuff, like the suction of it biting into it can pull an implant out. And like, Ooh. so she, so a dentist said no, the bottom side just said no. <laughs> Y'all are saying Yeah, I mean, no. like, she was also, <laughs> Kirkpatrick also went on to say that it can cause gastrointestinal distress due to the intestines inability to absorb fructose. Cause a lot of people have like fructose malabsorption issues and it's kind of like that's adding to it. So it can do all kinds of crazy shit. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, just don't, Oh God. I mean, the fact that like, I mean, look, these, I'm sure some of these people that are doing this were the same people that may have done those like tied, those tied pod challenge. Remember that thing? Oh God. Like the who? Cinnamon challenge. Yeah. It's just like, what the fuck? Like I just, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not into that. But uh, yeah, I just, you know, this seemed like a really good article. I mean, it was a really good article. And I feel like it hit all the points. TikTok, <laughs> pooping, diarrhea, and uh, crazy people that just want to, you know, become I superstars. Would, <laughs> I would pray that those people are into subbing. <laughs> and that like, that like want to be dominated by like a dominatrix. And that's why they cause so much self-harm. <laughs> so, but you can only hope. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be something because that just even like the, like, not knowing anything about like dietary issues or anything like that. I don't want to eat like that. I don't want to eat frozen honey, like gobs and gobs of it. Oh. Like it's making me like ill thinking about it just now. So, <laughs> Woo. Yeah, but also like the internet is this amazing place where Alex makes these delicious recipes that I can drool all over. And then there's ding dongs out there who are doing this. Come yeah on. welcome to the internet man that's <laughs> i mean you get it's the yin and yang right you got like yeah. amazingness and you got like insane bad shit stuff where you're like okay like how bored are you <laughs> incredibly yeah incredibly <laughs> bored well so with that boring. crazy with that not boring but crazy story uh alex thank you so much for being on our show you're fantastic all. loving all the tasty things that you're putting providing for the world out there specifically to the bottom communities or people that like like to bottom i should say and uh, with that, would you please plug away and let everybody know where they can find you, where they can know all about you? Yes, thank you all so much. I have been loving this. This is the best podcast I've ever been on. <laughs> thank you. So fun. I fucking love y'all. This has been so fun. Um, so plugging away, um, you can go to www.thebottomsidejust.com. You can sign up there. I'll send you my new recipes when they drop. And also just like go gag over the page for a while. It's super fun. You can also see a picture of my very mysterious husband on there because he does <laughs> half of the job. And he, will not, he won't get on camera with me. But so that's one plug. And then the others are obviously my social like Oh, actually, back to the website for a second. You can also get merch. I have lots of cool t-shirts. Oh, excellent. And, tops, and I design all of it. So it's all made in-house. Um, nice. Yeah, I was then, just going to say that kitchen towel I'm so buying for a oh couple of people. Oh, my God. <laughs> it says it's a kitchen towel that says kitchen but let's be honest i'm a cum towel too yeah. <laughs> dual so, purpose <laughs> yeah, every towel is let's be honest um, and then um so i'm glad you thank you so much for shouting that one out that's one of my favorites and and then on social you can find us on at bottoms digest on tiktok tiktok is where we like thrive to be honest and we do most of our stuff on tiktok we're also on Instagram as The Bottoms Digest. I'm currently trying to get my handle from these this gay podcast that has been not on Instagram in two years. <laughs> so wish me luck. But I'm The Bottoms Digest on Instagram. And then you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. But I think my main plug is like, just go sign up on our website so I can send you recipes when they drop and you can try them out. Yes. Um, I can't wait to try them out. Healthy for the gut and great for sexy time too. Yes. I can't wait to try these out. It's going to be great. Share our insider article with like grandmas and moms and stuff in your life and like all that. So (laughs) (laughs) that's been like my favorite piece that we've done so far. So, but yeah, I think that's about it for the plugs. Excellent. We'll We'll put it all in the show notes. Yeah. It'll be all there. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. And uh, thanks for laughing and learning everything but with us. And happy pooping, everybody, and enjoy your butthole. 
For more info, go to heypoopypodcast.com or email us at heypoopypodcast at gmail.com. You can send in show ideas, guest requests. Check us out on Twitter at Hey Poopy, Instagram at Hey Poopy Podcast, TikTok, Hey Poopy Podcast, and our awesome new Facebook fan page. Go check it out at Hey Poopy Podcast. We're also on Discord at Hey Poopy Dumps, or you can contact us at our new awesome hotline. 203-998-5579. Hey Poopy Podcast is brought to you by Perfect Four Entertainment. Produced by Dave and Ellen. Edited by Dave. Executive producer Stormy Leather. Theme song by Jordan Pearlson. Hey Poopy.